I want you to introduce me everywhere. That was fantastic. That was good. You do comedy shows, and you get a comedian who's tired of other comedians introducing the comedian. So it's never that positive and glowing. It's usually like, it's another guy who's after my job. Just please don't laugh. You know, and then you go up there, and you just fight your way through an angry bar crowd. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Volunteers, journalists. Are there journalists here? Raise your hands if... You probably aren't identifying yourselves as journalists anymore. I understand. I love journalism. I'm so excited about journalism. And I, I know there's, there's a, might be a journalist out there listening or watching, and they're like, yeah, right, I make $3 an hour for a little paper in Salida. But f feel our love, okay? Journalists, you are so important. Teachers, anybody a teacher here? They're like, hey, let's screw the comedian tonight. Just pretend like we're nobody. Is this Trump's cabinet? Who is out there? <laughs> Who is out there? No, I love teachers too. I just want to hug a teacher. I don't probably get maced or something, but just share my, my this, this right here. I mean, more than ever before, I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling the love. Although I would have teachers that are disappointed in me uh, because I was coming down here tonight and uh, I, got, I got busted on the train for not having a ticket. Please hold your judgment. Please hold. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I'm already qualified enough to be Trump's Secretary of Transportation. I mean, I have enough. <laughs> I love that child back there. <laughs> I, I, Chris, just, just let me know what you need, all right? When your birthday's coming, just give me a wish list, all right? I'm going to be the bald, beardless Santa that shows up at your house. <laughs> Probably get maced and stuff, but I'm there. I'm there. Thank you for being there. Oh, my God. It's like, yeah, no, but it, it is like opposite. Uh, you know, it's like sometimes I have kids, I have kids, and, I, and I'm, I love them, I love them, but I want to like them. You know, that, that's, the, that's where I find a quandary, you know, on a daily basis. Um, and don't take any of this personally, young ma'am, uh, young lady, because uh, it's, it's just innate in children. You have a magic power. I never thought I would be this guy who at six in the morning was walking around the house like a syphilitic king yelling about shoes. Shoes, where are the shoes? Where do the shoes go? Where are the shoes? This is my kids. I, you know, when you, before you have kids, you're like, I'm going to be the patriarch that I've always wanted to be. And this is who you turn into be a kind of squatting feral monkey thing. Like, where are the shoes? I'm like a failed jester. Where are your shoes? Where do the shoes go? Does that lost sock take them? Like a little. Does it merge with a missing mitten and make an animated creepy Chucky doll and just take the shoe in the middle of the night? I don't know where your shoes are. I didn't want to be this person, okay? I didn't want to be this person. Where are the knees on your pants, young lady? I hope you got a discount. I hope you got a fleeping discount. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, kids love them, I do. But I did get busted on the train and, uh, who here has a good attention span? You between those two mon men must have to carry the conversation in a way that makes you feel like we're evolving. So I would just like you, ma'am, uh, if I get lost, because I do, I go kind of back and forth, and uh, I, if you could just remind me, I'm gonna look to you and say, just give me a noun, and it might take me back to where I was. Okay. On the train. I was on the train and I got busted. And that's the thing, like, I, I don't have many high horses from which to topple. I don't. Like, I was just a guy walking around the hallowed halls of the Open Media Foundation with a Paps Blue Ribbon. I, this is not someone you look to in a time of crisis. You're like, give him a dollar and hope he makes a good decision. I, I'm a guy, I'm, I don't, when someone sneezes, I don't feel qualified to bless them. No, I don't. I'm like, no, you know, I don't know what my blessing would even mean. I, I have no idea. Like, I, I'd probably put a pox on you or something. I have no idea. So, but one place, one, like my son the other day, my, my middle boy, Otto, lovely child, he said, Dad, I want to be you. He didn't say be like you, he said be you. That's like some next level stuff I'm not ready for. I was like, this relationship is moving too quickly, young man. Have you not seen my internet history? I don't think anybody wants that, all right? Just... <laughs> So I don't have, it's, I, I'm not up there, like I'm not pontificating, although that would be ironic since I am up here preaching to you with this microphone, please ignore that, hypocrisy. So, but one place that I do hold myself with a high standard is I always have a ticket on the train, 
always. And I have a monthly ticket. And today I'm coming down to this thing and I forgot to renew for February. And it was the worst time possible. I'm on the train. I'm standing there. Didn't even take a seat. Didn't do it. Don't deserve it. Not going to bless you. Not going to sit. And so I'm, I'm, I'm standing on the train and this guy's like, hey, didn't you host this thing? Is this Go Code Colorado, this big coding thing that happens? I was like, yeah. He's like, that was a great show. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting recognized, you know, and positively, you know, and, and uh, I'm talking to him. He's, got, he's with his date. He's with his date and he's feeling good because he recognized me and I kind of remember him. And then there's the date and we're talking and there's this like triangle of success and everything feels good. I feel my hair's growing back. Like there's this stuff. I'm so excited. And, uh, and, and I can see he's distracted by someone behind me. And I'm just like, probably someone else who recognizes me. No big deal. Probably, hold on one second, sir. And it wasn't a sir at all. So don't start conversations with any gender specific pronouns. Don't do it. Okay. It was a woman who probably has a, gets a lot of trash can't say certain words, being a security guard, right? This short, shorter woman down here. So you already got like some Napoleonic stuff going on. And I already like this, I went, I failed immediately. And so this guy with his girlfriend who just met this guy who he, I'm not going to hyperbolize too much, but I think maybe admired me for just a moment, saw me topple right in front of him. As I had to turn and deal with the ultimate social failure of getting everything wrong in one place. And I wasn't even ticketed to be there. Like, and so I got a warning. I got a warning. So I feel pretty good about that. I don't, I got low standards for success. Honey, I just got a warning today on the train. Uh, but now here's, uh, let's see, we could go multiple directions here. I could continue with train stories but I have a limited time. Is that my countdown clock right there? Should I watch that with you? Is that eight minutes? I got eight minutes. Well, I think, let's see. What do you want to, you're, what's that? It's flexible? Oh, I thought you were requesting that from me. I was like, ah, uh, no. Uh, yeah, no, no, my name is Jared. I should introduce myself. And uh, as I've uh, mentioned, I do love uh, journalists. I love teachers. I love you either. I, I don't know who's teaching or journaling right now because no one here apparently does. And I appreciate much the same. But uh, I, yeah, I, I, I have kids, and I, uh, we were talking about Trump a little bit. I think I could do, I could go to the, tra oh, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? This is totally appropriate right now. I'm going to save the train story. This is the way I'm going to get you to my next show. I'm going to, I have an amazing train story. I'm not doing right now. So, right, right, no, no, don't try. Don't try. I must apologize because somewhere down here in the lower third of the TV screen on channel 57 and channel 881, this place has so many channels, I'd be concerned about their ultimate motive. It's like, <laughs> it's like global takeover stuff. Um, but it says jared.live, and I apologize. I was trying to get my website all fancy, and I couldn't. And last minute, I just forwarded it to Facebook. So I am taking you to Facebook, and I, I am sorry. No one wants to be on Facebook right now. You just don't. It's weird. No one likes Facebook, but where do we all end up? Facebook. We're all there at Facebook. And there we go. And you know what? The new like, the new like is just the new digital pretending to listen. They didn't read what you said. They just like. And I, you now they have Facebook. I know, and Facebook is like a little like prison. I mean, here you are. You spend all day writing on walls and getting poked by complete strangers. I mean, it's just like, and here we all are. And you didn't get that. I, I, you, if you were going to have a discussion, uh, you know, I would not be worried. I've kind of hoped that social services would come to my house for like three hours so I could see a movie. I'd be like, can you just take him for a little bit? Is it, how does this work out? I okay, no. But no, I uh, distracted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you for nouns here for a second. So, but everybody's on Facebook. It's just crazy. And now I'm sending you there, and I'm sorry. And I know all of you, all of you know too much about too many people now. Like, I've lost gray matter. I used to know where my kids' shoes were, perhaps, or where my keys were. But now that gray matter has been devoured by Betsy Sue, who told me that she had a biscuit for breakfast. It just ate it away like, a, like an online weevil. And there we are back on Facebook. Liking, just liking things. I didn't hear what you said. I'm just liking it. Which now they have, they have different emoticons for ranges of emotions, which is so disappointing to me because I really miss 
the dark comedy of people liking someone who are going through a terrible time in their life. <laughs> so my mom has cancer, like, good job. Great, great work on that. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to tell you that. I wanted to apologize. I just wanted to apologize. I have this other, I have this other website. It's, I was so excited about this. I got this domain name, shamelesslypimpingmyself.com. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now, you noticed. The, uh, no, and I was so excited. I would do a comedy gig, and I'd say, find more about me at shamelesslypimpingmyself.com. And nobody visited because they thought it was another joke. They're like, yeah, <laughs> digital jokes, how intrepid. And it was, uh, it was a fail. So the comedy I'm going to do, this is, okay, 425. Okay, I was just getting about to, that's the magic, no, 420, whatever. God, weed. I wish I, could, I wish I could do weed better. I'm the worst weed guy. I, I just try, I'm that guy who always says in the beginning, like, it's not doing anything for me. Not do, and then you find me like a day later, and I've eaten a 48-pack of Costco hot dogs. And, uh, kind of a true story. So... Uh, Although I'm glad that it's, just, it's legal all the way across now. I'm glad it's legal, because when it was medicinal, I was tired of pretending that all my friends were sick. You know, it was exhausting. Like, but, not, okay, not talking about weed. We're, here's the story. Okay, 348, that's the perfect time. Perfect time to tell the story. So I, because this is a radio and TV place, I should share this radio story. I worked, I've worked in radio for years, and when I started, I was really young. I was too young. You know when you see like a childhood star just burn out? You know, I kind of know that. I, 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 I can feel a little bit of the Willis from different strokes phenomena. Um, and if he's here tonight, if he's watching, I thank you for your work. Um, uh, so so I, I was too young and I worked, I was 20 and I worked on a classic rock station in Farmington, New Mexico. Yeah, right? You, are you from Farmington or? You know, that's all right. They will take that. You know, they don't need direct love. Just a. And when I was there, I, I, and this is mean, but I used to tell people if America were a shower, Farmington would be the drain. I used to, not true, not true. That's the White House now, not true. When he said he was going to drain the swamp, it was just so he could catch all the weird things, you know, all the scum. But the, so, uh, what? Uh, local man, not seen ever since comedy gig. But so, so I worked down there and I was just, I thought I was a rock star. It's crazy. I had this amazing amount of hair. It's just beautiful now. It's this. I got so much face. It's strange, you know. People, no, it's crazy. It's like people like Jared, you're, you wear your emotions on your sleeve. And I'm like, no, I just wear my face all over my head. You know, it's just like I can't not. I have a, look at this. I got a baby's butt in the back of my head. Are you getting that channel 57? Look at that. I didn't know that was where, thank you, God. There is no God. Let me just say, A, because Trump is the president. B, I lose my hair, and you'd think the least he could do is give me a nice, smooth Kojak, but instead, I've got this amazing little cleavage in the back. I don't know if my mom ground corn there in desperate times. I have no idea. I do not know. I'd be so popular in prison, but the, so, what? I didn't, sometimes it slips, it slips. Uh, so, uh, so, anyway, so back, I might not make it in $1.39. I might not. Okay, can I? Okay, just guy. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm working down there, and uh, things are going really well for me. And uh, or so I thought. It's amazing uh, what delusions of the 20s do for you. So I'm, I'm on the air down there, and I was relatively young and probably hungover. And when I signed the deal to do this comedy here, there was this list of of words. They had to sign, you had to sign a, a sheet so you wouldn't say a list of these really dirty words while on stage. And let me list them for you. They are, no, I'm just kidding. No, but they, you know the George Carlin bit that inspired the FCC regulation, and they tell you that. Well, in like my first week of being on Big Dog 96.9 in Farmington, New Mexico, all those words came out. And it kind of was my fault. It kind of wasn't. So I'm, I, here we are, Big Dog 96.9, and uh, 1047's loving me pimping this other station. It's in Farmington, Denver, okay? Don't get all bent out of shape. And so, you, you, I'm getting adoption paperwork as soon as I get off stage. So, uh, and so I, uh, I'm, uh, what, what's happening here is I, I was in the studio operating things, and my morning show partner was on the roof. And I, I'm ashamed to admit this, and I'm, I, I have a lot of community service to do to, in the eyes of the public to make up for this, but 
it was classic rock radio in Farmington in 1997. And so we were, he was, he, we, all this, it was us. We were dropping water balloons on buxom women in a wet t-shirt contest to win tickets to Night Ranger, okay? <laughs> that is a fan. What are you gonna do today, Jesse? I don't know, go ahead and forsake all of my dignity to get some $12 tickets to an 80s band that had one hit. Excellent. And so these women, these buxom women are two stories below. And my morning show partner, Todd, is on the roof dropping water balloons. Why am I laughing? If you're wondering how Trump got elected, just this moment probably should sum it up for you. We were number one in the market. No big deal. And so he's dropping water balloons. Now, he's on the roof. Now, this is a little technical stuff for you. Oh, I'm breaking the bank now. That's not even my time. So, um, uh, so he's on the roof dropping water balloons. I'm in the studio, and he has a monitor up there, not unlike one of these things, so that he could hear when it was, I, it was his turn to talk. He would hear me say, and that was another 38 special song, and here's Todd up on the roof doing that terrible thing. Well, his monitor was broken, which meant two things. One, he didn't know that when I turned him on to the world, I had a switch here. Bloop, I could turn his on, on to the world. and So he didn't know that. And because his monitor was broken, broken, he was pretty much unleashing George Carlin's ghost unto the world, which at the time was just the atmosphere around him. And probably a few frightened buxom women who were wondering what else was going to get hurled off the roof. And so I say, and now we're going to go Todd to the roof. And I turn Todd's mouth to the world, the whole swath, Telluride, Durango, Aztec. Come on, everybody get on this train. You're all going to get some debauchery right in your face. And... Uh, and he, meanwhile, says, I mean, this is just like a wagon train of foul. He says, this, I turn him on, here we go, click, and he says, this mf and f is a C word. Whoa, 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 and I, I didn't have anything queued up. I didn't know what to do. My hand swelled like some kind of terrible drug side effect. I, I was floating around the room suddenly. I wasn't, I mean, because I just got hired. I'd signed all this paperwork and had all these lectures. And I, I turned off the knob and I didn't have a song ready to go. I didn't have a commercial ready to go. I had not, this is in the 90s. Like we had to use carts and these crazy little eight track things. And, and uh, I was frozen. I was like, and, and when you're in radio, dead air is worse than cuss words. And it was getting, the dead air, the silence was getting louder and louder. And I had no idea what to do. And so I just like reached toward the microphone and click. And uh, I just spit a little bit, but did not make you, did not, did not get there. So uh, the next, I'm sorry, you might want to get another mic, uh, Mr. Reskin. So, uh, and so I turn on the radio and I'm like, I did, this is what I said. This is what people heard across the number one station in the four corners. I, I, I think it's a good time for a sh shower. And then I just, I turn off the mic. I didn't know, and I, we, we had these CDs, and they, these CDs came in the mail with all kinds of songs, and the program would tell us exactly which track to play, but I just shoved the CD in there, and it was like some country song. I think it was like Badonka Donk or something. <laughs> Listeners are like, what is happening to our universe? And it was so weird, like, in that silence, when you work in media, you, and I know that the DOM people here know it, but you don't hear anything but negative feedback. You, you don't, my first day, I was like, I'm the new guy, and this phone rang, and I picked it up, and they're like, you suck, and I was like, well, this is fantastic. And so you don't hear from anybody. And that day, that day, I got off the air, and I sheepishly walked around town, and one of my professors at Fort Lewis College, Jim Waymeyer, said, I was at the Durango Diner, and you couldn't hear a drop. You couldn't hear a fork clink a plate. We were all waiting to find out what was going to be said. And you told us to take a shower. <laughs> and uh, so I was terrified for my job. Nothing happened. The only call we got about it was this trucker called the studio line. He called the studio line, and I'm like, hello. I was terrified of what, what was going to be said. And he's like, hey, buddy, I'm uh, driving from California to Utah, and I'm out in the desert. And uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but it kept me awake. So thank you. <laughs> And ironically, that is when I realized the importance of media. It's like, wow, listen. So thank you, Devereaux for Media, for having me tonight. I'm sorry about eating up somebody else's time, and I'll give it back to him later. My name is Jared Ewe, and I love all of you, especially her. And here's your amazing host. OK, OK. No, no, no. no. Oh, we're sharing a mic. Okay. 
Good, because you already shared all sorts of things on this mic, so now we're sharing in a new way. We're second base already, yes. Yes, congratulations. Good job. Everyone give it up for Jared Dewey. So good. So you've been involved with Denver Open Media before. Yeah, that's right. I, I, we did a hackathon down here, and we invited people from the public to come down. I work with a company here in town, Name.com, and we do these hackathons, and people came down, and they came up with projects to improve journalism, uh, make it more responsive, uh, modernize it so it can deal with alternative realities, and uh, there were some incredible projects. I'm glad you're talking about computer hackathon, because I thought you meant comedy for a second. And oh, oh. Ha hackathon I mean, is very different in comedy. Thank you. But yeah, no, that sounds amazing. And um, so t tell us about uh, some of the, what you're doing and where we can follow you and stalk you. Okay, no, I appreciate that. I, I, stalkers, that's great. If anybody's interested, um, I'm kind of slow, so it's gonna be it's gonna be better for everyone. But uh, tomorrow, actually, this I, I, tomorrow I'm hosting the the Cherry Creek Diversity Conference at Cherry Creek High School. It almost sounds ironic, but uh, the it's been going on. I don't know. I've hosted it for nine years, and that was a jerk thing to say. But uh, we have someone who's left-handed, and no, but just kidding. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> shut up, Jared. Okay, stop it. So, uh, but I've hosted it for nine years, and there's uh, I think about 80 schools from around the state show up, and there's really no better time than now, or practically any time, to have young people show up and talk about diversity. So I do some comedy and um, and get get it going, and then. The next thing, I, I got to put that together, but if you could just stop by my terrible Facebook website at jared.live, then I can tell you what's happening. All right, perfect. All right, well, follow this guy, poke him, like him, give him all the emoticons, and uh, get him high after the show. All right, thanks again, Jared. Jared Ewey, everybody.